Today we are going to make a tumbler using the rotary attachment for the X-Tool M1 Ultra. We are going to walk through a beginner project from start to finish so you can really get a good idea of how to use this setup. The M1 Ultra is an all-in-one DIY tool and what we have set up here is the laser. It is on its riser base and you need this base in order to use the rotary attachment. If I pull down the front here, there is nothing inside of here. If you are engraving something very small in diameter, you can add a honeycomb base to kind of bring your base up, but we're going to work with it just as is. On the inside here, I do have the laser module already set up. This is the 10 watt laser module. So just keep in mind that my settings may be a little bit different if you are using the 20 watt. This is the RA2 Pro. This is the standard rotary attachment for all X-Tool machines. So when you get this, it's going to come with instructions on how to set this up for various machines. Right now I have it set up with the chuck. The chuck works by holding tumblers like this inside of your machine. There are also rollers that go on here. These rollers would, the chuck would come off and these would sit kind of right here and they would just hold your tumbler or any cylindrical item. The other thing that comes with it is this little end piece here that kind of acts as a leveler. So if you have your tumbler in here, this can kind of level the other end for you. The instruction manual does a really good job of showing you how to set this up so we can get to this point. Now we need to put it into our M1 Ultra over here. Your RA2 Pro is going to come with a couple different cords. This is the cord that works with the M1 Ultra. This is also the same cord that works with the F1 as well. If this is your first X-Tool laser, I highly recommend saving all those cords. If you like laser engraving, you're probably gonna end up with another tool uh, pretty soon. So save these cords, because you can use this with your other X-Tool machines. So this is gonna plug in right here. And then this part plugs into our machine. When I open up my M1 Ultra, I have taken out the base plate that was sitting right here. So this is the bottom of the riser base. We have the laser module installed. The rotary attachment is just going to sit in the bottom. You can place it this way, or you can turn it around and place it the other way. You don't want it to go like this. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to engrave. I highly recommend doing it like this. The plug for this piece right here is right here. It's right inside of the machine. There's a little silicone piece that's covering it, but it's right inside. It does not have to plug into the back of the machine. It just plugs right in here. So that is all plugged in. That is set up. Now we can put a tumbler in here. We're going to engrave on this tumbler right here, and this is a tapered piece. Typically when you have a tapered piece, if you want to do the whole thing, it has to be done in parts because the focus of the laser is going to be different for here than it is for here. So what we're going to do is start with something a little bit simple. We're just going to do this top part right here. So before we put it in the machine, we need to take some measurements. Your RA2 Pro is going to come with a tape measure. And my actual creative space is set to inches, so I am going to measure this in inches. You can use inches or millimeters. But what we're measuring right here is the perimeter. And I'm at about 12 and a quarter. So 12 and a quarter I need to write down. The other thing I want to write down is the measurement of right where the powder coating starts and right where the taper starts. That is about, I'm going to say three and a quarter inches. So with those two measurements, I want to engrave the entire perimeter of this top part right here. So now I can go ahead and put it 
onto my chuck. Ooh. There are a couple different ways you can put this on the chuck. Because this is so wide, I am actually going to put these grips inside of this tumbler. So I am just gonna slip it over the top, push it on there really good. And then this key comes with it. And I can put the key into this hole and tighten everything up. Take your time with this and really make sure that all of the little silicone pieces over on this end are even. What we ultimately want, we have this little measuring piece that also comes with your RA2 Pro. We ultimately want it to be level. It's definitely not right now. I've got a little bit more work to do, but we want this to be level. And then I'm gonna turn it a little bit and make sure it's still level. So I've gotta play around with this until I get a fully level surface right here. This little piece right here can help greatly on the end of your tumbler. So this is gonna help me hold up the end. I just place it right underneath and I can bring it up or bring it down. I'm not able to bring it up too much because it'll start to lift the base of my RA2 Pro and I don't want that. I really just want this to hold the end so nothing slips while we're engraving. So once this is all level, I can go ahead and turn my machine on and hook it up to my software. Uh, this cord that's in here, you're probably not gonna hurt it in any way, but I do like to kind of tuck it away just so it doesn't get in the way of any engraving that we're doing. Now that the machine is on and connected, I can move my laser over and I'm going to get the red crosshair right here. And I'm gonna use this for lining things up. So I'm gonna move everything around here so we can get that crosshair right between the silver and the coated part. And I'm just gonna spin this and make sure it stays level and on that purple part the entire way around. All right, move that down just a tad. Now let's go over to the software. Here we are in Xtool Creative Space. Over on the right, my M1 Ultra is connected. So is my AP2. I am venting into that today. First thing we need to do is tell the software that we are using the chuck and not lasering on a flat surface. So that's up here on the top, and I can choose the chuck on the right. And I really do like that we have arrows that it's showing you which way it's going. You can also pick the rollers if you're using it that way, but we are doing the chuck. So our screen changes a little bit. So these red crosshairs indicate where they are on the tumbler right now. So over here on the right hand of the screen, that is the bottom of my water bottle. And on the left hand of the screen, that is the top of my water bottle. So now we're gonna enter the perimeter. And we said that was 12 and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to auto measure. The way that we are doing this here, we do not need to mark anything. I do want to lay out my design a little bit. So I'm just gonna draw a rectangle, unlock the aspect ratio, and the width is going to be the height of the measurement that I took. So this is where I wanna engrave my water bottle. And the height is going to be the 12 and a quarter. That is the full wrap. So essentially, we have over here on the left, the top of the water bottle. On the right is the bottom of the water bottle. And this long rectangle here is going to be the full wrap. So I'm going to place this rectangle right by the crosshairs here. So everything inside of this will be engraved. Now I'm going to bring in a design. Actually, before I do that, something really important. Over here, we're gonna turn off the output of the rectangle because we don't want to engrave the rectangle. So I wanna engrave this collection of hearts here. The first thing I'm gonna do is make it a compound vector to bring it all together. And now we're just gonna manipulate it a little bit so that it fits within this rectangle here. So I'm happy with how that looks. 
Now let's pick our settings. I always recommend testing something first. I am going to choose just a pink stainless steel tumbler. I have tested a lot of tumblers and I have found that typically the standard settings work, but make sure you have a couple pieces to test on. So we are gonna use the standard settings here of 50% power, 150 speed, and 200 lines per centimeter and everything is set to engrave. The next thing we wanna do is frame. And usually when I do a tumbler, I frame a couple of times because I really wanna make sure that we are engraving exactly where we want to. So let's go ahead and hit frame. Okay, we have completed our framing. I've done it a couple times. It looks like it's going to be placed exactly where I want it. So now I am ready to process. Down here, it's going to show me the trajectory of the laser, show me exactly what I'm doing and give me an estimated time. 37 minutes, not too bad for this here. I kind of like watching the trajectory of the laser just to see what it's doing. And once I'm happy with that, we can go ahead and hit start. This is a beautiful wrap completely around the tumbler that just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So anytime you pull one of these out of the laser, you do need to clean it. The easiest way to do that is with rubbing alcohol. And you're gonna take out any soot. You can see I got a good amount of soot on there and just scrub it clean. If this doesn't take everything off, your next step would be taking it to just wash it under soap and water with a scrubby sponge. You can also use a magic eraser. You don't wanna use chemicals that are too harsh because you can actually take away the coating on here. Usually rubbing alcohol and soap and water work really well for me. Engraving tumblers like this with your M1 Ultra is really a straightforward process. Once you get that RA2 Pro hooked up, you're gonna be doing these in no time. For more laser videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I am here every week with new videos to help you move forward in your laser journey. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.